Bro Cam here. I just had my first pro activation. Let's talk about it. If you don't know what POTA is, it's basically short for Parks on the Air, and it's just a fun way to practice and promote emergency communications uh, from national, federal, state, provincial level parks. There are two ways to kind of play along. Uh, there's the hunters, and then there's the activators. The hunters listen for people calling from parks, typically calling CQ POTA. Uh, or they can find their frequencies on the spotting page of the POTA website. There's no requirement for hunters to upload logs. Uh, when the activator uploads their logs, the hunter will get the points for it. Then there's the activator side. These are the people that actually take all their radio equipment out to the park. So basically the rule is that you have to have all of your equipment inside park boundaries. And for the activators to successfully activate a park, they have to make at least 10 QSOs. Uh, even if they don't make 10, they could still upload their logs to the POTA website and the hunters will still get their credits for hunting. So that sounds all fun and stuff, but you know, what do we get? Why, major awards. Hey Park, what is that? Don't bother me now, we can't see I'm busy. Yeah, but what is that? It's a, it's a major award. A major award? Shucks, I wouldn't know, Dad. It looks like a lamb. What is a lamb, you nincompoop? Uh, like... Activating in or hunting in different circumstances, times, bands, places, and many more things can grant you awards for doing so. So that's kind of a quick... My first experience with Poto was great. I had a short time, so I had to make every QSO count. Uh, I had a loved one just across the street from this park is a hospital, and they're in surgery, and I knew I had about two to three hours uh, to activate so unfortunately because of the time crunch uh, i also had some other people so let's set the scene i was parked at a hospital uh, in this lot somewhere and uh, i basically got out of my car after dropping people off and me meeting up with people we got out of our car we walked down across the street and then here is the uh, historic site it is just this tiny little site right here i think are the park boundaries uh, basically just the grass and uh, I set up in the front yard about right here I have a actually have a picture of uh, this is the front of it from the National Park Service website I was set up right about here uh, just on the other side of this tree so this site is basically the size of a house and a yard uh, and I had taken a peek around back so if you look to the left here if I pull up the map there's a little garage here there were some people working here and I didn't want to come and set up all my stuff and kind of be annoying to them. So I figured I'll just set up up here and you know, that'll be fine. So I set up my Wolf River coil and I threw down my magic carpet and I got to activating. Uh, if you don't know what a magic carpet is, it's basically a fine metal mesh, which is a, it's just a Faraday cloth. Uh, and that just kind of acts as your ground plane for your antenna. So I have an affiliate link to the one that I have in the description down below. I was very happy with the performance of it. I chose the magic carpet rather than uh, radials because it is a it's a smaller footprint than the radials radials that I have cut for my Wolf River coil. It's also extremely fast to deploy and pack up. Although there are some things I would change about it. Uh, I do believe I'm going to add some metal ferrules to the uh, corners of it so I can stake it down because that was one issue is that the wind was kind of taking it, but. It still worked really well for me. Some people said that they like to use the radials because it's more of a stealthy look, but I wasn't really concerned with stealth. I was just more concerned with being able to throw this out, plunk my antenna down on top of it, work it, take it all back up and roll it up and be done. Plus this lot is so small, there's not really anywhere to, I can like hide. So uh, there's no trees to sit behind or anything. You know, this tree back here is kind of, is right at the fence line. so they're going to see me regardless. So I just went ahead and just set it up where I was at. So I started calling CQ and I spotted myself on the, uh, the POTA website. I almost immediately got a call back from a uh, whiskey alpha five, Papa Juliet alpha. And uh, I thought it was all smooth sailing. 
you know, I got my first contact in the books and we're moving on. I could hear some other chatter around, but it was kind of some tough copies trying to pull them out. And just about then I turned around and a park ranger was coming out of the front door. So if I was set up right here, let me zoom in a bit. I was set up right here. They came out of this door right here. And uh, th they kindly informed me. They were very nice about it. Like, hey, if you're going to do that, we prefer you do it in the backyard. So I should have just set up in the backyard anyways and not worried about bothering those people back there, I guess. And I couldn't remember where at the time. I think because I was just frantically trying to get everything set up and on the air. But I knew that park ranger looked familiar to me. And it hit me later that day that that is the same park ranger that would always... Uh, Bug me to try and search my bags back when I used to fish down by the river. Stop! I am 35 years old. I am divorced. And I live in a van down by the river. So anyways, once I moved back there and I got set back up, it took only seconds because of the magic cloth. It was literally just, I shoved my radio in my sling bag. And then I like, uh, wolf of recoil in one hand. And then I balled up the uh, Faraday cloth in the other and just kind of walked back and then spread it all back out and plunked it down and I was ready to go again. So I squeezed out about three more single sideman contacts, but I was having no luck hearing anybody else. Uh, so I was like, I'm just gonna move to digital and pulled my laptop out and fired it up, got it all going. And uh, of course, uh, obligatory, always having issues with Linux uh, sound card stuff. So it took me about two minutes to sort that out, but I got it sorted. And I started calling CQ on FT8. And so there was a, a few times I had to kind of, uh, I had to move or uh, other people had moved over and they were stepping on me. But I was able to get about seven more uh, contacts out. Uh, I knew I was pushing how long I could stay there. Like I said, I knew I had about two to three hours in between walking out, walking across the street, setting up and everything. It had already been about an hour and a half. And so uh, I, once I got seven, I was like, <laughs> That's uh, seven FT8 and four single sideband. That's good enough for me. That's 11. Two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. So I was getting ready to pack up. And of course I had about four or five more people call back to me on FT8. But uh, I was with people that wanted to get back and everything. So we, we just said, okay, we're, I'm going to pack up. You know, I'd, I made a, uh, a post on the, the spotting page thanking everybody for hit, calling me up. But I just let them know that I was packed up and out of there. So here's a real quick look at the log I had. Uh, started off with the single sideband phone contacts and then uh, we moved into the FT8 stuff and um, it was great. I uh, really enjoyed POTA, my first POTA. I'm hoping to do a lot more. I'm, I'm not in a dead zone, but I'm kind of like, I've got to drive at least, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to get to any POTAs that are close to me. Uh, I also did have those guys working in the garage, like I was talking about. They were walking between this garage here, and I believe this is a generator or an air conditioning or something over here. They were sitting there working on that the whole time. And when I was packing up, they kind of said like, hey, what are you doing? You know, and I just kind of gave them the, you know, the 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 nickel spiel. I just kind of said, hey, this is a, you know, I'm I'm just doing some amateur radio stuff and one of the guys kind of like knew what I was talking about and uh, he was really excited. He was like, oh, that's, I've been thinking about doing that. He says, you ever put a radio in the woods and go look for it? And I was like, oh my God, that's called fox hunting. I said, I've never done that, but that looks like a ton of fun. He says, I, I've been thinking about getting, getting licensed. I said, you should do it, man. I said, it's, it's a ton of fun. So uh, and another reason to go do, do a POTA, be an activator is people can ask you what you're doing and you might, just bring some new people into the hobby. So how do you get started in POTA? I'll put the links in the description uh, to the POTA website and also this website. Uh, this is the, the docs.pota.app website. And there's just the getting started. I would just read this uh, and then get started for hunters, get started for activators. You could really just read get started, getting started and getting started for hunters and um, be off to the races. And then once you kind of get a few hunts under your belt, you get a few uh, contacts that way, then you can kind of figure out if you want to go do an activation somewhere. So this place also presented some challenges because there were no tables 
lots of parks have usually have uh, picnic tables or benches or something. There was none of that. It's just it's just a yard. So I had to set up uh, crisscross applesauce picnic style on the ground, and um, it was fine. You know, the the grass was nice and short, and the shade was I set up in the shade. It was nice and cool with the breeze. It was a great time. So that is about all the time I have for today. Uh, I hope you found this a little informative on Poda, and I hope that you will go there and either activate or uh, hunt the activators. And uh, I hope you have a great time doing it. 73.